I think the most challenging part is just the number of people applying for that job. Now, the entry level job market is challenging. No, it's not. I don't think it is. Well, I, let me take that back. It can be because here, here's the thing. So you have entry level jobs out there. They'll put a job out there, entry level IT job paying 45, 50,000. You're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. You might have 500 people apply for that job. So yes, that can be challenging if you got everybody and their mama applying for that job. Well, how do you stand out? Well, it's kind of hard to stand out in that, that arena. What's going on, PBO? Nah, man. Watching you dropping all them gems out there. You giving them, man. You know. I might get my membership up like you. So facts, <laughs> man. Facts. <laughs> facts, man. Now, just jumping on a few things you said. Um, entry level, I don't think it's challenging unless you're doing remote. So I'm old. I'm not trying to go in the office anymore. So when you look on Indeed, remote jobs be like 300 people apply for them. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. So if you're trying to go remote and the big company's trying to make you come back, Amazon paying people with 350, they want to touch you. So that's all <laughs> I'm saying. They pay you 350, they want to touch you. Yeah, I, I think the most challenging part is just the number of people applying for that job. Obviously, if you're entry level, that denotes that you don't have any experience. So how do you stand out versus everybody else with experience? Now, some people, they'll tell you to start fabricating some stuff. Tech G doesn't mm -hmm. believe in fabricating anything. But if you can dig into your past and find events, let's just say that your pastor at your church asked you to set up his, his or her computer or their audio video system or something like that. Now we can start using that as experience to put on the resume saying, hey, I do have some tech experience. I was the uh, the unofficial IT guy at my church, my community center from a grandma. That might help you stand out in a crowd of a bunch of newbies who don't have any experience all applying for the job. So that might be something you guys might want to consider doing. What type of side projects can you involve yourself in? Like, do you do you build computers on a regular basis as a hobby? Like I got a friend of mine, he likes to refurbish MacBooks and, and, and uh, laptops just to do it. And then he'll turn around and sell them for whatever. You know, he works in tech now, but like I say, if he didn't work in tech, he could use that as experience to put on his resume to hopefully help him stand out for that entry level job. So those are some things that hopefully you can do to try to, have some leverage over the competition that's applying for these jobs. That's true. Just chiming in on that entry level, like, you know, it, it, it goes both ways because there are more entry level jobs out there. So at our level, when I apply for senior jobs and, you know, there's 300 people apply, there's only a couple senior job entry level company might have 10 people on help desk or 10 people at the junior level. When you mm -hmm. go for senior, man, like I was interviewing for remote jobs. They're like, oh, you made it to the last three, but you didn't get it. That means I'm still unemployed, even though I got past 300 people. I didn't get past the 303, right? So mm -hmm. as you go up that senior, the two is, um, as you go up the senior level, everybody has the same degrees. Everybody has the same experience. So like you said, people hire you because they like you and you're a cultural fit, right? So you got to figure out what, what does that mean for you, right? We ain't telling you to sell out, but you, we ain't telling you your favorite way. We don't expect you to going there tap dancing but you got to figure out that you're a corporate fit that you can that they can work with you right so yep. how does that work for you and 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 two especially when you go in an office what does that mean because right? an interview is just a professional conversation yeah it can be but well obviously it is a professional conversation but still there could be some personal things brought up in the conversation so what do i mean by personal so let's just say we're having a personal conversation i mean a, a professional conversation but i struggle to make eye contact with you I'm talking in a low whisper. I'm looking all shy and timid. That stuff is personal to you. And then the person interviewing you, they might feel a certain type of way like, well, this isn't a very confident person as it relates to this job. Because let's just say you work in help desk, you're going to have to be interacting with customers, whether they're paying customers or customers from another department. They may or may not have the patience to deal with a, a really shy and timid person where, where they can just throw you in the back of the room somewhere and let you do your thing. It is professional, but they can make personal judgments about you to a certain degree based off of your overall demeanor, how you look, your appearance, and, and things of that nature. Yeah, to me, like you said, that's 100% because when people ask you, they're asking about your personal, like we talked about, then is, is your corporate fit? And two, depending on what job are you trying to be. Now, if you're a hot shot programmer, we expect you to do some Java code or some C sharp, and we can put you in the back of the room, that's fine. But most of the time at the senior level, you got to interact with the C-suite. You got to interact with senior people. Like you said, you got to have a level of confidence, especially in cybersecurity. You trying to see if we got hacked and we agree to lose $3 billion. You can't go in there and shop. You got to show them that you can take control of a situation. You can take control of people and you can take control of others. And a lot of times is, especially for senior people, the CISO is going to ask you a hard question in front of the CIO. You can't be whispering and act like you're shot because the first thing they're going to be is like, 
this dude don't know what he's talking about. You mm -hmm. could be the smartest person, but if you portray that, people are going to take that in and be like, this dude don't know because you got to command a situation, especially at a senior level. I guess an example I can give of that. So my last job, I did the interview with the guy who was my direct boss, aced the interview like a champion. So then I had to go do another interview with the CEO of the company. So everybody, you know, most people are probably going to be nervous as hell. Oh, Lord, the CEO. So I went in there with the CEO of the company. He's asking me all these questions. Where do you see yourself in five years? I was like, I think I said something like the CTO, the CIO, like, you know, <laughs> like I just started just because, you know, my thing is I'm not a shy person. And so he asked me this one specific question. I think this is why he actually hired. Me. He said, um, why should I hire you? Now, everybody has these canned responses. They looked up online. Oh, I'm the best. I'm, you know what I told this dude? Because I had researched him beforehand. I told this dude, like, listen, you hire me. I'm going to make you some money and you're going to pay me some money. But that's what I'm here to do. You want to make millions. I want to make a lot of money, too. So you hire me. I think it's a win win for both of us. Now, I walked out of the interview. I was like, ain't no way in hell I'm getting this job. Do you know they they called me the next day like you're hired? I was like, I bet you nobody has ever told them that in a damn job. Job. But the reason why I was so confident in saying it, because one, I already had another job lined up. And then I was just like, eh. I don't know if I really want this job, but you know, I might do it anyway. But at the time, even though this was a professional conversation, I felt the need to bring out my personal attributes and a part of me, because like I said, military, there's a don't give a f type of mentality. That's a part of me. I just felt that it was appropriate to bring it out because I was like, at the point of the interview, I was just like, I'm pretty sure he's heard everything in the world about this, that and the third. But I highly doubt he's heard somebody tell him that he's going to help him get more money. And I actually did, because like I said, when I got hired on that job, they ended up bumping my salary up. $10,000 within the first four months of me working there. They gave me a, a pay increase. I was so damn good at the job. That's the cool thing too about IT and security is once you get to a certain level, it kind of gets repetitive after a while. You're doing some policies and procedures and some system security plans and some incident response plans, but that's why you get paid because you understand how to do it. And two is just real quick. And I know people talk about two imposter syndrome. You got to work on your craft so you, you don't have fear of the role or the job you're going to get because you worked on your skills. Like you said, you got your search, you did your lab, you did the things to make sure you're good in your craft so you won't have imposter syndrome. Yeah, that is extremely true. When you are the more confident you are, it just oozes through you to where it's hard to deny it. And you can lit literally get up and walk away because you're not coming in there where they sense the desperate on you. Facts, it's right. Like, yo, I got other options. I don't, I don't need this, but if you offer it to me, I might take it. Uh, recently laid off trying to find a job in IT. Is the job market bad right now? I haven't had any callbacks applying 30 days for a job. So like I say, I don't know what city you live in. Obviously, this is dependent upon the city that you live in and the market. Because I know if I go pull up Indeed in my city, there's probably like 20 IT jobs, entry-level IT jobs ready to go right now. There'll probably be another 20 next week. But this could be a matter of, is your resume loaded up with the keywords that they need to make it past the, the software that's scanning it. And then also, do you have any experience? I know what you're thinking. I don't have IT experience. I never worked at a help desk. Well, have you done anything IT related just on your, in your personal leisure? Fixing grandma's computer, working at the church, doing a thing, you know, any little IT projects that you could, have you built a computer on your own? Have you, you know what I'm saying? Like something that you could learn off of YouTube. Do you have anything on your resume to help you kind of stand out from the other hundred people that are applying for that job? It's something that you might want to consider. Yeah. The other thing is you talked about it is I used to ha own hardware because I'm old, but now I do all my labbing in AWS. So like you said, are you spinning stuff in the AWS and getting you an active directory open? Are you working with OUs or are you just resetting passwords? Those are some things you're going to do on a help desk where if you lab, you at least can say, I set up a lab. I know how to change help desk. I know how to set up the complexity of it. I know how to put computers in the OU. I know how to, I'm trying to think of reformat a hard drive. I guess they, that's probably old school. They probably don't do that. Help desk. But what labs are you doing to say people that you are qualified? Even if you don't have the skills, you can say you've done a lab. Long story short, and another thing that Tech G does is I started a YouTube channel. I did AWS. AWS recruiter reached out to me and I interviewed for a $340,000 job. But like mm. Tech G said, I didn't do it in real life. So I, I was struggling in the engineering part. I, I went for compliance and stuff in engineering. But my YouTube channel gets me experience and I was laughing. So people said, oh, he did all this stuff in AWS. I took like each services and I, I spent it over to cybersecurity. Uh, realistically, I was going for a compliance job or somehow in, in, in engineering, but that's it. But I got a $347,000 job interview, right? Which was, mm -hmm. I don't make that now. I ain't going to lie. That, that's some real 
that's some out of world money, right? I think it was one sixty five base, eighty thousand yeah. restricted stock units, and I think they were gonna give me a fifty thousand dollar bonus, and that's mm. quite common at my level. I think it was some S five or six, right mm. underneath supervisor. But the part of it is, you need to be laughing and working, even at fifty six, which I'll be next up. I'm still laughing, still studying, cause I got ten more years. I'm a little older than uh, Tech G, and I got to get on my weight lifting. I got ten more years, so I'm okay. trying to ride it, ride it out in the cloud and lose a little weight. That's all I got, Tech G. <laughs>